seasoned. I'm winking at my seasoned ones. <laughs> I don't have anything in my eye. Welcome to Minivan Monday. I think it's been two weeks. Evidently, I do well making the vi Minivan Monday video when I'm coming off of my work weekend. So I got off work. I worked overnight. It's like almost 7 o'clock. I got some coffee. I got a piece of breakfast pizza. I probably won't eat that while we're talking. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I might be a little chattier than normal. I have a couple stories if I remember to tell them all. And as per usual, this is a good listen while you're doing something else video. Because I got nothing to show you. I'm just going to be talking to you. Um, so yeah, two weeks ago I was sitting down by the lake. And I joked about being by the river in my van. Um, and it was raining... And now it's sunny. We had like some seriously hot weather earlier this week. I broke down and turned on the air conditioning. Yeah, no thank you. And um, today is beautiful. It's like 53. Perfect. And I remembered what I was going to tell you guys last time was at that point two weeks ago, they had already filled up the swimming pool in town. We have a swimming pool, an outdoor pool. And I was so excited because I like to do water exercise classes and they have one at like 5.15 in the morning, which will be perfect for when I get off work. And I drove by today and I saw it's already started. Their ladies are out there. So I didn't have my swimsuit on or with me, but I will, I don't know if I'll get up and go tomorrow morning, but for sure the rest of the week, that would be perfect. And it's just... It'll be a nice, they also do it in the evening a couple times, but eh, early in the morning, right when I get off work will be best. So that was what I forgot to tell you. Um, yeah, it's really pretty outside. What else has been happening? Um, I don't remember. I'm kind of tired, as always. I had a little bit of a cold. I'm doing better, but I might sneeze. I sneezed. I just did a Snapchat and I sneezed. Um, or I might start getting croaky, so I'll need to take a drink. Oh, so I'm, you know, I'm all about being honest. And if you guys follow me on Snapchat, and when I say that, it's not that I mean I want you to go follow me on Snapchat. I'm just forewarning those of you that do, you're going to hear some double stories probably. That's why I say that. Because I know not everybody has it, and I don't post out there all the time. But So last week... It was a week ago, because it was last Sunday, I took Eddie to drop him off at work because we had to drop his car off to get some service done on it. And it was like early in the morning on Sunday and I dropped him off and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to the grocery store and get some groceries. So I did. And I looked seriously hot mess because I had not, I'd had a couple days, or had I, no, I'd been working, so it was... No, it was my days off. See, I can't keep track of my own life. It was my weekend off, which means I don't not put, or means I stay in pajamas most of the time. And um, usually don't shower or anything. And I'm pretty sure I hadn't brushed my hair in two days. I'd brushed my teeth. Anyways, I looked like that kind of person and I had like a shirt and leggings on, whatever. And I went to the grocery store and I did my shopping. And first of all, I got a Starbucks. I tried their, um, it was a Frappuccino, like a s'mores Frappuccino. And I did not like it. I actually threw most of it away. I had requested it non-fat, which is just kind of my standard, any little way I can find to cut calories. So I always do non-fat and no whipped cream. Well, if you get the Frappuccino s'mores or the s'mores anythings, the marshmallow flavor is in the whipped cream. They've got a special whipped cream. So since I said no whip and non-fat, she said she could just add a pump or so of the marshmallow flavoring. So I don't know if that's what made it taste off or if it just tasted off, but it was not good. So I drank, I kept trying to drink it while I was shopping. I'm like, why am I wasting the calories on this even at low fat? Because it's not no sugar. So I threw it away and then I'm trying to leave. I'm good. Well, I'm not, it's not like they were holding me back. I was walking up to the checkout lane and this is where I tell people who think I'm really nice. I'm really not that nice. <laughs> or maybe it's just that I am human. It's not that I'm not nice. It's just this, I'm just a real person. And I 
do you guys ever have like where you turn an aisle in a grocery store and you see someone and you turn around and go the other way? Anyone? Anyone else do that? I'm interrogating you under the sunlight. Um, I do that. Sometimes it's people that I just personally don't like and I don't want to even look at them. They make me sick. Honestly, that happens. Um, not so much where I am now, but where I used to live because of situations that happened back there. Anyway, and then um, sometimes for me, by the time I'm done shopping anywhere, not the grocery store, could be anywhere, I am just done. I don't want to talk to anybody. I barely want to like say hi and be polite to the checker. I just want to be done. It's like, I've been here too long. More than likely I'm hot because I swear they adjust the thermostat in every store to make you as uncomfortable as possible. And my feet and knees usually hurt. And it's like, no, I just want to be done. <laughs> so I'm about coming up to the checkout lane. And I notice this gentleman dressed very nicely. Looks like he probably just came from church. And then I recognized him. And he is an extremely, I mean, talk about a nice person. He is an extremely nice person. And we know each other through a friend. We, you know, have a very, I don't know, a, a casual friendship. You know, if we saw each other, we would chit chat. I mean, whenever I do see him, we chit chat. And... <laughs> I knew he was by himself and I'm like, oh, I just don't want to talk to him <laughs> because he's the type of person, there's no such thing as a short conversation. Again, most of you are like, seriously, Kathy, call the kettle, kettle or Kathy, kettle, whatever. You know what I mean? Because I rarely can have a short conversation, but <laughs> at least it seems that way, doesn't it? <laughs> so I was just like, oh. And he's, I mean, kind-hearted, but he's going to be like, oh, what'd you buy that for? What'd you get this? Where did you find that? Is that a good deal? What are you doing in town? Because it's, you know, far away from where I'm at. And, well, what's been going on at work? And da, da, da. he, in some ways, I always joke he's like a five-year-old with, like, never-ending questions. I don't think he waits for the answers. But, <laughs> so he's, he is, so I'm like, the checkout lane's right here. And it's like the bigger aisle, you know, in front of the checkout lane before the other um, actual rows start. So <laughs> I want to get here to the checkout lane and I'm coming this direction and he's coming this direction. And there's some, um, um, carts where they put like the clearance items, you know, the, the discounted stuff. So he's in there who to do looking in these carts. And at the end of these carts is kind of this tall free spent standing display. I don't remember if it had like batteries or gift cards. You know, it's like taller, probably six foot tall, or at least it's taller than me. So <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm far enough. I can't like do an about face. It would be almost obvious the quick movement, <laughs> quick movement me. <laughs> and um, so I'm like, timing it and like trying to hide keep my face at least hidden behind this display so I'm trying to go here and I'm like watching and he's over here and he's just oblivious looking at the cart looking for his shopping stuff it's all you know again nothing wrong a good guy I just was so tired and didn't and I felt like it's like seriously I smelled I'm pretty sure I had BO I hadn't showered I just was not really probably shouldn't have been out in public but for sure didn't want to see people I knew so I'm like watching and then finally he quits looking and then he likes turns to like walk into the store so I timed it perfectly that we like passed by <laughs> the display at the same time so we didn't see each other and then I felt terrible and as soon as I got out to my car I um, messaged Kim because my friend Kim she knows this person and I'm like I'm so terrible and this is what I did and I'm, I'm like telling her I'm sending her like video chats of what happened and I'm in the parking lot and I look up and this lady had come out um hold on just wanted to lock my door I am down by the lake in a park and somebody's already walked by me they're out for their morning walk okay I just don't want someone to startle me so uh he, um, oh, so this mom, I'm assuming it was a mom. It looks like a mom with like a three or four year old boy in the cart and her cart's full of packages is like 
pushing out to go to their car and she's like going you know like you, you do with kids you go really fast like oh this is fun it's like a little bit of a ride and she's laughing and the little boy's laughing and her paper towel her pack of paper towels fell out from under the bottom of her cart behind her and she didn't notice it now I'm a little bit too far away it's not like it was right outside my door I mean and I could have gotten out once I was done with my video story and um I'm like, oh, she didn't see that, but there's people coming and going. So I'm like, oh, someone's gonna help her. Wouldn't you know, who's the next person walking out of the grocery store? Yes, the person I was trying to avoid. And of course, because he's an amazing person, he like rushes right over, grabs the paper towels, runs after the lady and delivers them. And I'm just like, ugh, further. He is good, I am bad. I seriously felt really guilty about it. I know, I make a deal out of things that don't need to be made a deal out of. I make a 10 minute story about something that didn't even need to be shared, but anyway, I just am letting you guys know I'm really not a nice person. Nope. <sighs> but then on the flip side, this has been happening to me. So I've, I talk about my job all the time and for the most part, it's really good. And the actual job is good and I've, uh, accepted the fact that I am the truck driver conversationalist. You know, I, they're my customers. That's who I help. And I am just friendly and polite to them because I think everybody deserves to be treated with polite, friendly behavior. As long as you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. So many people in the office have told me that I'm like way too nice and I'm a lot nicer than most of the other people that do this job. And I'm like, whatever. And I'm like, well, I'm married to a truck driver. You know, I just, I have a lot of empathy for these drivers and the lifestyle they have to live. And, you know, they just are trying to get home. They've got someone at home, just like Eddie's trying to get home to me. So it, maybe that's what makes me a little more um, patient with them. I don't know the right word. So in the past week, I have had two situations. One was a blatant, obvious hit on me. And the other one has turned, I can't figure it out. And now it's extremely awkward and uncomfortable. And I don't understand <laughs> because why people would, I don't know. I mean, for sure, if I am talking with someone, I mean, can't you just be nice and friendly to people without them expecting or thinking there's something more than that? I mean, am I old fashioned and dated? Let alone the fact if they're wearing a wedding ring. I mean, I joke around and talk with guys all the time and I respect that wedding ring and I certainly am not looking for anything, but I am also very aware that my behavior doesn't come across as potentially because I don't want it to, it, I don't know how to explain it because I'm like, no, you know, I'm happily married. I respect anyone that's married. And it's just, it's kind of frustrating that guys and girls, men, women, whatever, men, men, women, women, whoever it is you're attracted to. It's like you, people just assume that you, that's what you're looking for. Well, these two guys, I think that's what they're looking for because, and I don't know what to do now. So the one guy, he came back twice, like in the same week and, um, or it happened to be when I was there. And now, and I'm used to a lot of these people, the drivers, and it's mostly the men that they like will tell you their story. I mean, their life story. I get to hear about, I don't know, terrible. <laughs> Sadly, some of them do complain about their spouses or their mother-in-laws or, you know, I hear it's like, I sh feel like I should be like in, um, peanuts like Lucy and like have a sign up, you know, five cents for psychiatric help or whatever help. I'm not making a joke about that at all. Cause that's a whole different story, but just because it's like part therapy, my job. And, um, <laughs> but this one gentleman, <coughs> it got a little weird. Because the first time I saw him that I remember. Now, here's the thing. In this job, I see people all the time. And I don't mean to be rude, but I may not remember you if I've only met you once or twice. I mean, because seriously, we don't even have a full minute conversation. And um, 
I may not remember you. So I remember that one time, like a week ago when this gentleman came and we were talking because he was going on and on about how he'd had his heart torn out and broken and now he's just waiting and praying that God will bring the right woman to him. He's done looking and I'm, me being me, I'm like, I'm sure she's out there, you know, have faith, you know, you just got to be, accept and be happy with where you are, you know, just trying to be supportive because it is, I know what it was like, you know, when I wasn't with someone and wanted to be in relationships and it's lonely and trying to be nice. <clears throat> and then he starts in with the, well, you know, God's given me some spiritual visions of this woman and well, you know, to be honest, she has your figure. <laughs> Those of you that know me, it's like, okay, he likes big girls. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But it's like kind of an odd thing. I'm thinking, you know, a average size person probably wouldn't hear that. So the fact that someone says it to a plus size person, it just seemed a little odd. So he's only seen her from behind and she has my figure. Except then the story changes that she turns around and he only sees her eyes. Now he didn't say they looked like mine, but he told me that story. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, good luck. And at this point I start doing a lot of talking with my wedding ring flashing forward. Um, <clears throat> and so that was fine. And then he left and I was just like, okay, whatever. He's lonely. I don't mind if I can help his day be better by talking to him. That's good. So then earlier, like in the past week, so like a week later, he's back again. And I'm not, you know, I don't know who to expect when I get there. I don't know them by their truck name because it's just like whoever it is, you know, Werner, um, Bay and Bay, Q, you know, you see all the different um, carrier names out there. So all of a sudden I'm like working and you know, I can tell somebody's at my window and I turn around and I'm like, oh, it's him. He's like, hi. Starts talking to me. Starts in with the same story. Oh, you remember how I told you my heart was broken? And I say, yeah, yeah, I'm sure God's got a plan. There's somebody out there for you. She'll find you. You just got to be patient. Oh, it's hard to be patient. Uh, and then, um, <clears throat> again, I can't be rude to him because he hasn't said anything inappropriate. So I'm like, well, okay, well, we'll get you in the door and yada, yada. So finally, I'll you know, get his whole thing, you know, his shipment taken care of, do his bills so he's printing them, and signing him out for him to leave. And I'm like, okay, well, you have a good week. And um, then it was raining. It had been storming like all day long. So then he, I said, well, how, I said, be safe, you know, be safe driving in the rain, take, take care. And he's like, oh yeah, well, that's another spiritual vision that got the Lord gave me. And I'm like, a car crash? I didn't know what he was talking about. He goes, yeah, we're, something about spending some time in, in the rain. And he did say a thunderstorm. He was in a thunderstorm with this woman making love in the rain. Now, this is when I'm thinking this is making me feel uncomfortable. I don't know why. It's like, I don't want to hear about your personal sex life, um, especially complete strangers. <laughs> it's just not something, I mean, it's something I might talk about with some of my best girlfriends, but, or my husband, <laughs> but I don't want people talking about whether it was a dream, a vision, or I'm like, did you read some adult magazine and there was a story in the back? I don't know. Um... <laughs> So that, I just, and I just kind of kept nodding and like rolling away. And yes, there is a complete bulletproof glass between me and the people in the entry. They cannot get to me. We're very secure. But, ah, oh, somebody else is walking. They're going to be like, who's this crazy lady on the phone? Anyway, so that was the first gentleman. I told you this is going to be a long chatty story. And now he's, 
I, I don't know. Now I'm like paranoid. Like, is he going to be here every week? Is this like a dedicated route? Because that frequently happens. A lot of my drivers that I see, I do consider them kind of friends because we chat, but they don't tell me about their sex life or their significant others or inappropriate discussions. We just like chit chat. We talk a lot about dogs and cats, <laughs> you know, friendly, normal stuff. But that one made me a little awkward. So, of course, I'm telling Eddie all these things. Because Eddie's a truck driver. He understands. And, and he tells me. And he then he is not liking this guy. He's like, you need to tell the guy I work with. He goes, you need to tell him what's going on. And I'm like, what's he going to do? But um, just because. I work with one other guy. And he kind of always has my back. But um, <laughs> it was... Just I'm like, okay, so that I tell my friend, my coworker, the whole story. And he's like, you said what to him? You're encouraging him. You can't tell him that. I said, I just told him that there's somebody out there for him. And he's like, you're giving him hope. I'm like, do you not see me? I'm not what normal society would find, you know, desirable. <laughs> Obviously, there's a niche of men that do find me desirable. But... I'm happily married is the other part and I always am saying oh my husband's a truck driver and here's my ring so anyway my co-worker knows so now we <laughs> came up with a code word it's kind of our thing like we have to come up with code words every now and then so we're like well next time he's here what are you gonna do oh uh, caca caca <laughs> well that might be a little easy or too too obvious or then he's like stranger <laughs> I'm like, no. So his decision is Dahmer. Oh, next time he's here, just shout out Dahmer. I'm like, oh yeah, that won't be. So anyway, so he was aware of it. And it's like, you know, and I'm joking and laughing about it. Not that I don't think, you know, because my whole thing is, all of you guys that are still here are seasoned friends. You know how much I want everyone to feel valued and empowered and that they're worth something. And they are, but I don't want that to cross over to like make them think I'm interested in them in more than just being a friend. Does that make sense? And I don't know what I've done other than just be polite and courteous to this gentleman. But he hasn't like flat out asked me out or something. He just, you know, in his spiritual visions has this woman who has some characteristics of mine. So that was that one. So now I just get off work. And last night, it happened again. I'm like, seriously? I think the whole thing is because I left that job that I was so unhappy and so stressed out with. And um, I just have happiness. I think on my face now and in my voice, I'm just always very happy because I don't have that negativity and those toxic people. And in my personal life and my work life, I've really cut them out. And I think it just helps me well it helps me amazingly but I think it just kind of emits do you guys you know don't you think that like if you're just happy and things are going good I mean nothing's ever perfect but if you're happy with your life right now I think it just is like contagious so there's another gentleman who I only remember talking to once he's been there before and he, the last time he was like oh I'm so happy it's you and he's like from the other end of the country and he goes, you're just always so nice. And I said, oh, thank you. I said, you know, I said, I appreciate that. I said, I really, you know, I said, I have no reason not to be nice. I said, I just know you guys are working and I want to help you out and get you moving and whatever. We talked a little bit and that was it. So now he's back. And I could, I did, actually didn't remember him, to be honest, until he started talking. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's you. So then... He didn't say anything inappropriate. We were just talking. And I'm like, well, you have a safe trip back to Florida. And then he's like, do you have a piece of paper? And first I thought he wanted me to put something on his his papers sometimes and stuff. No, no. He goes, just like a piece of paper. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like a little notepad thinking he needs to write a note about his shipment. I mean, whatever. People are always writing stuff down. So I'm like, oh, sure. So I like find a post-it note. And I go, oh, this work. And I like slide it through to him. He's like, yep. So then he's just sitting, you know, standing at the counter writing, you know, looked like he was looking at his paperwork and then writing some stuff down. So I'm talking and I'm talking to the coworker 
And then I come back to my desk and then he's like, he goes, oh, you know, gets my attention and he slides this post-it note under the little window. Yeah, I am almost, okay, I'm not yet 50, but I have just received my first phone number from a guy who slid it on a piece of paper. <sighs> it's like, I can't be mean to people. And again, I guess maybe I didn't say I'm married, but it's pretty obvious. <laughs> and it, I mean, it's very nice. He's very polite, nice gentleman. Just said that he really likes me a lot. And he even requests to come to my place of business because he hopes to see me. And then he gave me his phone number. And I don't know what, it, and I just kind of smiled. I'm like, oh, thank you. And then he did a, when he walked away. Now that one, I may be clueless, but that was pretty obvious. I think he was hitting on me. <laughs> and again, as soon as I could, I wanted to like call Eddie. This was like at two o'clock in the morning. And I was like, no, I can't call, wake him up. But Eddie called me when he was awake to check in. And how's it going? And I'm like, I got my first phone number. <laughs> guy and he's like what he yeah he he's a pretty jealous guy he knows he has nothing to worry about but he's a little jealous and he's like what and then I told him a story and then he starts laughing because I said I go you know I said I couldn't say anything mean to him as soon as he got out the door of the building I like turned to my co-worker and I'm like Dahmer Dahmer and he's like what was that him and I said no it's a new one I said now I've got two <sighs> So I'm just taking it all as flattery and that's about it. And hopefully if either of them come in again, I will just have to be firm and just say, you know, I am married, happily married, not interested in anything other than just being kind and polite to you while you're here at my workplace. I mean, what else do I say? I don't know. I should probably not even post this because I, I, I worry that I'm come sounding like, I don't know, bad. Not that I, I don't want to sound bad. I don't want to sound like I'm not sensitive, but I, I'm just not used to having to deal with that. I mean, it's part of why I am the size I am is it's a layer of protection and you don't have to deal with a lot of that stuff. Anyway, so that's been my week. One for sure hit on. One just, I'm not sure what this whole thing is about. And then I'm like, and then I'm like mean. It's like, seriously, these guys are like so nice and so sweet. I'm like, no, I'm not. I purposefully avoided somebody in the grocery store because I didn't want to talk to them. That's not a nice person. And it's like, you don't even know me. If you knew the real me, heck no. You don't, you know, do you want to see my whiskers? Because they're here. Do you want me to tell you all the terrible things about me? <sighs> but, okay, seriously, this is going to be a long one. <sighs> I'm excited. This week is my massage week. And I get my hair cut and colored. Cut, I, sh I say cut, but really we just trim it up. I don't change my style. But I'm very excited because... If she remembered, she, my stylist was going to pick up some of that temporary, like, wash-in color, like what she can get, the salon quality kind. And, um, because I said, oh, wouldn't that be kind of fun for the summer? Because I don't want to, like, color my hair, like, to lighten it. And then, like, to do, because I was like, oh, it'd be so cool to do some purple or some blue or, well, whether some highlights or streaks. But, you know, when you have darker hair, I don't think that works. <laughs> So we were talking about it and she said she would look and see, um, I think purple or blue. So we'll see if I do it and then for sure I'll have to come on with a minivan Monday so you can hear about and see my colored hair. And if she forgets, it's no big deal. We'll just do my normal cover up all these grays because they're certainly peeking through. That's for sure. Okay. Okay. Anything else? I don't know. So that's my short week. So I have the weekend off. Um, I will be on Saturday getting together with my friend Joyce and my other crafty friends. We 
have done it once before, so this will be our second time getting together for a Saturday to craft, and it worked out really well last time, so I'm excited. Not sure what I'm gonna make. I need to make some cards. I don't need to make any cards, but I just enjoy making cards, so I'm gonna do that <coughs> on Saturday. And then I think parade season starting for Eddie. I apologize. I'm sure the lighting's, but again, we're just we're just talking because the sun the sun is rising, and I'm hiding behind a tree. This is me being stealthy. Just imagine me. The sun is the person I don't want to see in the grocery store, and the tree is protecting me from being seen. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's on Saturday. And then, yeah, parade season starting for Eddie. I know he has a parade on su Sunday. I don't remember where. I think it's like, like kind of far away, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to go with or not. But we'll see. It's always nice. For me, the enjoyable part is like being in the car and being able to talk with him. Because during the parade itself, um, he's busy. And then afterwards, he's usually pretty tired. But, um, you know, it's kind of nice to have some time alone together because that doesn't happen very often as most married couples would know when you're busy and it's like when you do somebody's falling asleep or you're watching tv or something's happening but okay i've rambled long enough those are my big stories again haven't posted any editing sorry <coughs> i just yeah i'm it's not that i don't enjoy it i've said this before i just find myself not on the computer when i'm at home I, I'm doing other stuff now, but I do have videos I want to post and Kim and I want to get together. We have some new stuff that Eddie picked out for us to taste test and I just like hanging out with her, making videos and being silly. Mm -hmm. But okay, my voice is starting to get a little, ah, uh, it can tell I'm going to be needing to sip more frequently. So I should probably just head on out and go home. So. Thanks for hanging out, friends. If you made it this long, now you know what's going on in the life of Kathy. Uh, who knew? <coughs> who knew? And yeah, like I said, I'm usually pretty oblivious. Even when I was in the dating world and to find like if a guy did like me, they pretty much had to like say, excuse me, <laughs> I like you because I was clueless. <coughs> flirting, all of that. Terrible. Terrible at it. I'm just friendly and nice, but I'm like, oh, oh, you mean something other than, yeah. <sighs> the the post-it note under the, un, in the window with the phone number, that one's pretty obvious. I, I picked up on that one. The other one, the stories about the spiritual visions, I'm just not sure. Not sure. That one, I'll have to keep you updated on, but We'll see. Okay. Thanks for hanging out <laughs> with me down by the lake. When I first got here, a bunch of the, I'm assuming they were ducks. Maybe they were geese. To be honest, I couldn't tell the difference because <coughs> they were on the lake. But it was like, now none have come by. But like within five minutes, there were four different family groupings. I'm like, oh, they're like out for their morning water aerobics. <laughs> They're already really cute because they're all swimming and there was one where they were like little tiny babies and then one looked like where they were the teenagers. And now they're all gone. Gone, gone. You can see, can you see the lake behind me? Isn't that pretty? Oh, look at that steering wheel. There's that tree I've been hiding behind. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Definitely either need to move the van so the light is not so bad or, um, just say goodbye. So I'm going to say goodbye to all of my dear friends. Thank you for hanging out with me. And please, please don't think I'm a terrible, terrible person for what I've shared with you. And just know that you do matter. You matter, you matter, you matter. And just, I don't know, if you're lonely and looking for someone and waiting you know, for God to bring them into your life, just have faith, have patience, and just don't force it. <laughs> don't force it. And if you find someone and it's not going to work out, I don't know. It's like, I care. I do care. And you guys know I care about you. 
and I just, it's like, I, I want to like, just let them, you know, be there to talk to and like talk things through and just be the friend, be a friend. That's all I want us all to be for each other is just be a friend. So have a good week. We're in the beginning. Well, actually we're already into a first, a new month. Summer is here. So take care of yourself. Okay. I love you guys. And I really, I can't see anymore. So I, I gotta go. But I love you.